Um, this is just one way of doing Lego facial animation. It's not necessarily the best way, but this is how I did it in my animation. Um, so the first step that I took to, uh, to doing it was uh, just procrastinate for several weeks. That, that, that usually works. Then what you want to do is open up a uh, Photoshop file. Uh, I'm making it 1080 by 1080 pixels. Um, I've got a, a Lego face in here just for reference. Um, let's just grab that color and fill in the background with it because that will help. Uh, yep, we're just going to make a bunch of eyes. So I'm just going to grab um, my brush here. Um, uh, just want to make it a little bit soft um, to cover up how sort of dodgy my track is going to be. I'm making these eyes kind of wobble a little bit and also be kind of imperfect. So I'm going to call this eyes one. I'm making another layer um, and I'm just going to sort of trace over the same thing. I'm going to call this eyes two. Just make sure we're not deviating too much as we go. Eyes four. Okay, now once I've got all those layers, um, I'm just going to isolate them and save them all out as PNGs. So I'm going to file, save as um, a PNG, eyes1, eyes4. Yeah. Okay, um, so now I've got the eyes, now I'm going to draw a smiley face. I'm gonna make this a little bit small. Yeah, that looks pretty good. Smile one. All right, so now what we've got is a bunch of eyes and a bunch of smiles, and they're all the same. And I did name them intentionally this way so that what I can do is in After Effects, I can go File, Im Import, um, Just grab the faces and import them as a PNG sequence. And once I do that, it'll actually import them as a sequence. And the other thing that I want to do, I can hear something upstairs. All right, interpret footage main. Uh, I animated this at 12.5 frames a second, which is half of 25 frames a second, Australian standard. Get with the times. All right, oh yeah, and the other thing you want to do is loop it. Uh, I just do a thousand times just to be sure. And <laughs> let's import the mouth as well. Import file. Um, same deal with the smile. Change the settings for that one as well. One thousand. All right, new comp from selection. Okay, and now what we've got is you can't really see anything. Uh, and yes, unless you turn that on. Okay, so now that we've got the eyes uh, on this background, and I guess we'll add the smile in as well. Yeah, there you go. Uh, so some tips for face animation. Uh, there are basically, uh, when it comes down to it, there are six basic emotions that are all sort of agreed upon, and those are happy, sad, fear, surprise, disgust, and anger. Um, I like to add a seventh one, which is uh, disappointment. It's pretty self-explanatory. Okay, so we're gonna to come to the composition settings and instead of it being like a square, we're gonna make it a rectangle. So what I can do is take that rectangle and wrap it around like a cylinder, um, which is gonna help when we line up stuff with the motion capture. So what you wanna do is take the height, multiply it by three, so it's 1080 times three. Um, um, 1080 times three, 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 two, 40. Okay, so I just did that in my head, um, that's three, two, 40, should be right. All right, cool, excellent work. Um, another thing I'm gonna do is add a solid yellow color in the background, um, just so we can use that to line up. Okay, so that's our face uh, sorted. Um, I'm just gonna make these, these a little bit bigger. Now what we're gonna do is take the footage that we've animated already, which, which you definitely animated your footage already, right? Yeah, you, you, you didn't procrastinate, did you? All right, now we're gonna take our footage that we just animated, um, which is this. Pretty cool, huh? Yes, yeah, some sweet animation right there. Um, now we're going to take, oh yeah, let's 
grab these things and put them into here. Ah, all right, now everything's in the same, in the same folder. Um, we're gonna take our face. Uh, let's first of all rename this face animation 04. Yeah. And we're gonna drop this in on the top here. Huzzah! Done. No. <laughs> Still got a bit of work to do. Um, I'm gonna scale that down. Okay, so now it becomes the fun part. Um, and for this, I'm actually gonna go back into the face animation and add a grid effect to the yellow background. And now you can't really see it, but if I just, well, if I turn off this alpha background, you can kind of see it. Let's make the borders a little bit thicker as well. There you go. Okay, so now you can see that. Um, now we're gonna go here and get our CC cylinder effect and drop that in Oh, no, there we go, it already is there. Sweet. So there there are a few tutorials that sort of go into this, um, this whole CC cylinder wrapping thing. Uh, Chris Boyer, go over, go head over to his channel if you want to learn more. He did a really good video on this and actually has a folder full of uh, Lego faces that you can just use and apply for lip sync. I obviously didn't do any lip sync in my animation because I didn't have any talking. Um, but one thing that he didn't really go into was how to track the faces. Uh, what I discovered was that it is pretty much your worst nightmare. <laughs> so. So um, now you're going to witness the horror of what was, hang on, I can get the spreadsheet up. 25 hours of post-production time on masking and face tracking. Holy crap. Yeah, don't, don't try this at home, kids. <laughs> I didn't sleep for like three days. All right, so basically you just use these sliders to kind of position it in the right place. Um, whoa. And the other thing is, it doesn't have to be perfectly exact, but it should be pretty close. Um, you know, you can kind of fudge it. I'm also not really replicating any of the lighting for this, um, just because it seemed to work without it, and it was a lot of extra work to, to do the lighting. So the first thing I do is sort of line up the cylinder so that it is looks like it's attached to the Lego man's head. And then what I'll do is just grab the rotation Y and rotate it until it's lined up over those eyes. And if it's still not quite lined up, I can do a little bit of position Y up and down, or maybe it's a bit more tilted. One thing to look at is the curve of this bottom part and the curve of his helmet, I guess. Um, and that's usually oops, X, which is the tilt in. Um, but like I said, it, it doesn't have to be perfect. All right, so now we've got this, which is good for about a frame, but that's not what we want. So what we gotta do is grab all of these things and add animation to them. And now, if I hit U, it'll bring up all of my keyframes. So when I exported this animation, um, it was at 25 frames per second. Um, but the animation itself, like the movements of the character, are in 12.5 frames per second. He's only moving every two frames. So what'll happen is if I, say, line up, you know, the head like this, um, in the next frame or whatever, and then step through it, see that? Uh, it'll interpolate the movement between the, um, the frames and you end up with this weird jittery feeling. So the way that I found to get around that was with every set of keyframes that you do for moving this is uh, you highlight them all, right click and go keyframe interpolation and you switch it to hold. And now they should turn into these little boxy square things. And now uh, what you can do is every keyframe after that should um, just hold. Uh, rather than interpolating the footage. And by interpolate, I mean it fills in the frames in between. It like takes the point here and the point here, and it creates like a little frame in the middle here of it moving in between them, which is not what you want uh, when you're animating at uh, half the frame speed. Uh, animators will understand. <laughs> and so I'm stepping through this with page up and page down. Um, and it looks like that rotation's a bit off. It would probably take me about five to ten minutes to do a shot like this. There's not really a whole lot of movement in it. The same, the same process applies to virtually every single shot that you do. No matter what the angle is, it's pretty much the same. So yeah, that one looks pretty, pretty well lined up. Um, 
same deal again. And this is just the part where it's just, you just gotta sit there and do it. One thing I might also suggest is that you get a mirror so that you can look at your own expressions um, and that'll help you with uh, sort of working out what you can, what kind of faces you can pull. Like, ugh. if you can't stand looking at your own face, then uh, get someone else's face, buy a six pack down at Kmart or something. Ugh. Okay, so I've just gone ahead and finished tracking that manually, frame by frame, and it looks pretty good. So I'm gonna go into the face animation and turn off this yellow solid in the background. Uh, first thing I'm gonna do is just add a little bit of blur to, um, to that animation layer. Um, make it about three, just to soften it up a bit. Um, I'll make it about five. Yeah, that's better. Um, and then we're also gonna take the opacity and then drop that down to about eh, 90%. Um, so to help it blend a little bit, uh, but not so much that you start to see the dots behind his eyes because that would not be very good. So with that done, uh, you can start getting really creative and actually go into the face animation um, and take the elements and actually animate them within this layer. So, you know, I can take this smile and like put it over here and then that'll actually change and line up on his face still, which is pretty cool. So what I might do is actually take this mouth and uh, let's go to uh, P for position um, and then animate it moving to the side. Uh, and what I'll do is I'll scroll to where he stops here and then when I double click into this, it should line up at about the same spot on the timeline. So then if I animate it here, it'll move in the same way. So there you go. Um, and one thing I'm noticing is that it's playing back that at 25 frames a second, which is not very good. Um, I'm just gonna make these keyframes um, and make all those hold. So and this is a pretty janky way of doing it, by the way, don't, don't do this. Um, but that's just so the mouth moves at, at 12 frames a second. So you can do stuff like grab this, command shift D, and flip it over so that it turns into a, a sad face. So now what it'll do, so you know, it'll, like, usually I'd add a couple extra frames in there, but I don't know, maybe of it um, scrunching up or something. I'm gonna make all these um, hold as well. Ah, that looks terrible. <laughs> Alright, so what we might do is we'll change the scale of it, so. So yeah, you can do stuff like that and it'll look pretty cool. The other thing you can do is take the eyes um, and make them blink. I'll turn on scale. Um, and set two keyframes on either side, and then in the middle, I'm just going to squash them down like that. And just check back to make sure that they're not showing too much of the tracking dots behind. Um, otherwise you can mask over those with some yellow. Um, I generally avoided doing that. Another thing is when people change their facial, facial expressions, like they tend to blink. So, you know, if I go from happy to, uh, to sad, you know, it helps if you blink in between. Um, I don't know why, humans are weird. So yeah, if you want, you can add some blending and stuff, like you might wanna add some shine over the top of this. I generally didn't need to, the animation looked pretty good to me, so I just left it as is. Okay, so then what I'll do is I go File, Export, Media Encoder, and uh, I generally export as ProRes 4444 files. That's just a high quality intermediate format. Um, otherwise I'd use DNX HD, but I just find ProRes. Uh, has less problems. And yeah, that shot is pretty much done. So now you can sit back and revel in the fact that you've just created life out of a static object, and also in the fact that LEGO animations don't get you chicks.